Hey, it's Donnie and welcome to Coding Overload. And today will be the first post in our Tinker series. Now, if you've logged into Tinker, I'm gonna assume you have an account, you should see this screen. Um, this is your classes. You can create a class if you'd like. We're not gonna worry about that today. And you have these options on the left that we'll talk about a little. Um, before we really get into this, um, I do want to say that this video is directed towards people who are familiar with programming but do not necessarily know anything about like Tinker or Scratch but will understand some programming terminology. Now the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a project and that this will be the first menu we talk about and this is where you can create all the different kinds of projects. Now you have your, your blank project here where nothing's added for you. And that is what we're gonna use today. But first we're gonna talk a little about what, what these are right here. Now these are kind of pre-made projects where they handle a lot of the boilerplate code for you. Now boilerplate code is all the code you need to set up to really start a type of project. So maybe you want a physics project. Well. There's a lot of variables, there's a lot of code you're going to have to create and set up before you can really actually start getting into the true meat of your project. Same for stuff like a music project, you're going to have to get all the instruments like loaded in, all of that stuff set up. These are just to make your life a little easier. Um, right here, you can see the video tutorials. And that is all the kind of like, you know, step by step tutorials that Tinker has built in. Great to take a look at, especially to teach yourself a little more. Um, if you go here, you will start seeing the robotics projects. And these are quite cool. You have your drone code here, your Lego We Do code, a um, couple other things that are quite interesting. Sumo is a very popular robotics platform. Microbit is very similar to Arduino. So you can do all kinds of really unique coding in Tinker. Now these three are very interesting. You have Python, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. These actually kind of let you do more traditional programming inside a block-based programming language, which is really neat. And something I'm gonna do in the future is to create a series where I kind of just talk about how can you teach a young learner Python by just using Tinker. And we're gonna go over kind of the differences and the difficulties of doing that kind of um, that kind of class, which I think will be really interesting. But today we're just gonna be going over the basics of Tinker and primarily focusing on just the interface and the menu so you kind of know your way around it a bit better. Now these are the quick tips. So if you wanna learn all about backgrounds, just click backgrounds. You wanna learn all about variables, just click variables. And they have like nine here, and you can do quite a bit with just those. It's definitely recommended if you just like really quickly need to know how to do something, just go click this. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna explain how it works. Very quick video, very unique, very cool. Uh, Scratch has a few things, but those are usually more project-based. They're a lot more like the video tutorials. So that's a unique thing about Tinker. Now we're gonna go ahead and just create a blank block project. And we'll let that load up. And we will start with this kind of default code. So this is the code the program starts with. And if we go to this arrow, this button right here, we can run it. And our sprite is gonna walk across the screen. He's going to bounce right here. Wait, yeah, about a 20th of a second. And then he's going to turn again and keep walking. That's very cool. And there's not there's not too much going on here. You have the on start, which what that means is when this is pressed, anything connected like that. See how it kind of lets you connect it? Anything connected to the on start, that code is gonna run as soon as this button is pressed. So a block like this will only run one time because the on start is only pressed one time. But right here is a loop, right? So forever loop, which means that these four blocks, because they're inside here, see how you can see the outline there? they will run forever until the program is ended. Like if we were to just let him run over and over again, it would never stop. It would just keep going until we manually end the program. Now, I mean, there's actually quite a bit of depth into just a really simple tutorial like this because you have all the animations. We can go and just create a new animation and he's just gonna do the bite and that's it. So you notice the walking is that, that animation is how we actually get that right there, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to do animations in Scratch, you usually need multiple costumes, and it can be tricky to keep it where it's like 
say you want the same sprite to do like four or five different animations, that can be very difficult in Scratch. It is doable with multiple costumes and maybe, you know, keeping in some kind of internal um, memory, some, creating a variable maybe that would hold the costume numbers and you could just cycle through those. But I mean, you can, you can see how that would end up being very difficult for young learners to know. So just having the animations in like this is so cool. And this is just the idle one, so he'll just kind of slide around like that. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about are these things on the side. So you have your control, where you have your conditionals and your loops. Events, where you have your on star, when actor click, when up arrow press, when I receive. Now, if you've done Scratch, all of these are the same. You definitely know how these work, and you're familiar with them. There's a few that are different, like these are the mobile options, which is quite interesting, because Scratch on mobile works but not too well. I've taught Scratch using tablets before and it can have a lot of difficulties but this the tilting is such a cool idea that Tinker has and it really adds a lot to it. Um, this is the documentation which is a, a just a cleaner way to write it like notes to yourself than Scratch has. It's a little neater. Um, so this is your control options as I mentioned. Um, Pretty much the only ones that are different are right here, which is the debugging. Um, we'll talk a bit about debugging after this. This that's this menu right here. We'll talk a little about it soon. Um, your operators aren't that different. Um, just take a look. They're pretty. They're pretty standard. Uh, variables. There's there's quite a bit that's different. Um, variables are quite strong in Tinker, and you can do a lot with them. Your functions are very similar. You just create a function, add whatever blocks, whatever parameters you want very normal motion is pretty similar actually I do not think there is any difference really at all between scratch and tinker motion um, animation we talked about is quite unique of course um, there's a lot of stuff you can do here you can do more like custom animations like this you have your scaling your rotation here you have your looks which can be pretty different from scratch you have like a very large box here for making like more custom design text boxes right here you have your viewports which is used if you have multiple cameras stuff like that you have your tiles which can be used for game development um, sensing which is right here lets you figure out um you know what's your screen size what's the user's first name id numbers your loudness if you're mobile or not stuff like that sound very similar to scratch almost everything's the same now the more option is where stuff gets a little more interesting now i got there because i went all the way to the bottom and i just clicked more and that let me see this big menu here and physics is going to be the first one we take a look at because i think that's the most unique like most useful thing tinker gives you is the physics engine it saves so much writing like you do not need to write nearly as much code to make quite a functional game when you have physics like compared to what you need for scratch now if we go here and we just start the physics we actually will see that nothing happens of course but if we put it there we will see that he falls and that's because the physics code when you start it initializes gravity it begins the the functions that figure out gravity and that your character is affected by gravity so it means if you want falling in your game and you want the bottom to just be the place where you stop falling right so you maybe want a jumping mechanic well right there you've already got it you already got your gravity all you need to do is add the jump code which if you want to do gravity in scratch it tends to be more like oh if you're not on this color change the y value or if you're not at this y value keep De uh, keep decreasing your Y value, keep making your character go down, right? And that kind of stuff, it works quite well. And if you're a decent programmer, then it's not a, not that difficult to do. But I find younger students tend to have a lot of issues with being consistent with color usage. Like, oh, they don't want all the platforms to be the same color. They don't understand why it has to be that way. Oh, they don't care about the pixel values and making sure it's exactly right and stuff like the sprites are slightly bigger than they look there's a lot of things like that you can notice like right here we have the the box the hitbox for it like that those are never the exact size right 
So that kind of stuff can be quite difficult for your younger learners. So the physics just takes care of all that. Now the next things we're gonna, the last couple things we're gonna go over are just gonna be these menu items and the sprite interface. And that will be basically all we covered today. So this is our stage. You can add some backdrops if you really want to. You can just play your code like normal, nothing too crazy there. And you just go there by clicking stage. Now here we have our debugger. And that has all of the variables associated with this actor. So if you notice if I move him, or I change his size, then things change. The width changes, the X position, the Y position, all of that changes. And if we run, you will see that those values don't go away, they just stay there. And you can use this to test if a variable is working. Like, oh, I'm not sure if that size is going up right, or if his positioning is right. Well, you can just watch it run in real time. You can actually play it from here as well and watch this. You don't always have to, you know, click around like that. Now, we're not going to really worry too much about the rest of this. I would recommend going, reading through this, learning kind of how to use this stuff. And we are going to move on to the help, which would be the, we will talk about the backpack a little, but honestly, if you've done any scratch, you'll be quite familiar with the backpack. You can drop blocks in, and then you can use them later. And you, so you don't have to always search for the same block. You can just take a look at it. You notice how I can drag it from here too. So if I want an extra on start, I just move it in there, right? And that's good for just making your coding more efficient. Now the help model is what I think is one of Tinker's most unique features because this is introducing your students to how documentation works, which is something that no other young learner program really does. Now, if you've read documentation for code, then this format is familiar to you. You have your function name, you have your parameters, and you have a short description of what it does. So if you go click when up arrow press parameters, the parameter indicates that the, that the, this parameter indicates the key that this method will listen for, up arrow, down arrow, etc. So it kind of explains how this works and what it does for you. And you can also check even the custom stuff. So from the more uh, tab there, you can check all of these. So Tinkerbot, oh, what does Tinkerbot do? Oh, it tells it how to draw a line, right? So you never have to guess about these parameters. You just look it up. And if a student's like, oh, I don't know what this block does, then one way to help them, you know, learn to teach themselves is just say, okay, go to documentation, look it up, try to figure it out on your own. And that will help them to kind of learn a bit more about how to find their own answers, which is such a valuable thing to be able to teach your students. Now, we have our actor here. You can just change the name by typing. Um, we'll just go Blue Monster. And in the edit, we have all the cosmetic options. So we can change the cosmetics, we can change how he looks, we can test the animations with the new designs. This stuff is unlocked as you like do more tinker you make more projects or it can be purchased as well since we're using the free version and i think a lot of you will probably use the free version we're just going to stick with the default things right now we'll go ahead and save that and you see that inside your code now inside the uh stage area your sprite has been changed every every change you made is saved and it's right here now this is really cool for making more like modular sprites like oh I only want to change one part of this sprite but I don't want to redraw it and I don't want to have to redo my animations because I changed one thing right so these are problems kind of scratch has that Tinker doesn't have you can go and experiment a lot without having to do a bunch of extra work um, you have your settings which just lets you set up any costumes you want any sounds you want and some of the more advanced options stuff like material which will affect how the physics affects your character. Now, that is all we are gonna be going over today. And the next series, the next video in this series is gonna be all about the control tab. And I really wanna focus on your conditionals and your looping. And that is gonna be the main goal. Um, I thank you for watching and I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something, had a little fun with Tinker and please like and subscribe and thank you very much.